Hi, I'm Steve Small from ILED Spinal Decompression. Um, we have been talking about subjective and objective outcome measures when tracking patients' um, improvements with treatments. Now, one of the uh, measures that we use is the Oswestry Disability Index. And a lot of people are familiar with this, but um, equally there's um, a sizable proportion who may have never used it before or don't know how to calculate it. And that, sometimes that can be a little bit daunting. Um, we use the Oswald Street Disability Index as, a, as, as part of our, um, you know, uh, a number of measures um, because we want to see how people's daily living is affected by their back pain and monitor and track changes. Um, I've recorded a, uh, well, I've made a, a uh, presentation which just shows you very quickly how to use the Oswald Street Disability, Disability Index um, and I'm just going to run that through um, for you now with a presentation I recently did. Um, so if we just go through here, so we look at other um, subjective and objective outcome measures. This one is the Oswestry. Um, so we're familiar with um, VAS scoring. Um, I won't go into that now. The Oswestry Disability Index. Um, so it gives us a sub subjective percentage score of level of function. Um, and it's particularly relevant for patients with um, low back pain. OK, um, it was developed in 1980, um, which seems a long time ago now, um, but um, by Jeremy Fairbank and Graham Pinsent um, in Oswestry, which is a, a town um, in um, in the in the UK. Um, and uh, and this has been used. This is you know widely used as a, as a research measure. So what does it consist of? There's 10 questions with six options. Um, the first question has a, has a, is, about, is about pain um, and the other uh, nine questions relate to um, different aspects of life um, and, and kind of force patients to, to think about, you know, how their pain is impacting them. Um, these are the last times so we have standing, sleeping, um, sex life, social life and traveling. So the question is how to score. So just going back, so we've got simple 10 questions, how to score. So it's a multiple choice and there are six, uh, six options. So I clicked eagerly there, um, six options. So six possible answers and each gives a score of from zero, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, there's a maximum score of 50. Um, um, and um, I don't think anyone will be coming in and having a score of zero. Um, so there is an optional question eight, which pertains to sex life. Um, some people, um, for them, the sex life is important and 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 their back pain is, is, is it impacts on that. Other people, they may not want to answer that question or not feel it's, uh, it's appropriate. So the, 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 the sort of questionnaire is based on either 10 completed answers or nine uh, if that eighth question is crossed out. Um, so how to calculate the score? You don't need a PhD in maths. Um, so as I say, we've got a maximum possible score of 50 if the 10 questions are answered. Um, so so you, you're going to just literally add up the scores from um, zero, one, two, three, four, five for each one. Um, and then you're going to take the total score. Now, it's, it's actually an easy way to do it is just to multiply your, your score by two. And that gives you, um, you know, effectively a percentage. So if the score was 30 out of 50, you could multiply it by two and you've got 60%. Um, from, a, from a mathematical point of view, and you'll see why I show this uh, when we look at nine questions, um, we can uh, take the total score, divide by 50 and multiply by 100 to get a percentage. So um, the score is 16 out of um, 50. 16 divided by 50 times 100 gives you 32. And you can see that if you just take the 16, multiply it by two, you get um, uh, 32%. So that will be your uh, ODI, your Oswald Street Disability Index score when 10 questions are answered. Now, if, if the um, sex question is not answered, that gives you nine questions. Um, so it's not a simple case of getting your number and multiplying by two. Um, it's, a, it's a percentage. So in this, in this instance, if nine questions are answered, the maximum score is 45. So you take your total score and divide by 45 and then multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So if the score is 16 out of a maximum of 45, 16 divided by 45 
times by 100 gives you 36 percent um or you can multiply your number by 2.222222 and and that will give you the same result so now you have a a simple uh, percentage score now how do you interpret these scores uh, they are categorized um, from minimal to uh, bed bound um, we look at this with with respect to IDD therapy and and typically you know it's it's anywhere from moderate to crippled we don't have bed bound um, and this will give you a percentage which you can record in your notes. So um, what is the percentage change? So this is always interesting um, to because we're interested in tracking outcomes. So if you have um, an ODI initial of 60% and an ODI final, you can calculate that. And the calculation is 60 minus 20 divided by 60. So you take your, your starting minus your final divided by your starting times by 100 starts to get a bit scary if you're um, not a fan of maths but um, if you just follow that that can give you a percentage change if you're tracking your um, you know your 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 um, your start point and your end point um, and there's another example if the ODI is initial 75 and down to a final of 10 obviously you you, you really don't want this to be going up and I'm not aware of that happening, but um, it, 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 it could happen in, in any particular treatment, um, but we would hope that that would be uh, really rare. And, and the importance of this really is just, you know, if you're if we're, if we're talking about practice based evidence, so you're not necessarily conducting an RCT in your own clinic, but you, you're getting some data points. And we're going to talk about I'm going to be talking about other uh, objective outcome measures. But, you know, from that kind of patient got quite a bit better, which doesn't really mean anything. You've actually got some measurable uh, data points to to kind of back up your um, your treatment program with particular patients, and this this is kind of in, in the context of an overall case study. So so we're trying to tick this box um, with respect to the Oswestry Disability Index. Now, if you have a program like IDD therapy and you're um, and and you're you're treating a certain category of patient, you you can you can use this on all of your patient. I mean, you could use it on all of your patients anyway, but you could add up all of your starting. Um, uh, um, ODI scores and the end scores to get a kind of overall percentage. And I think this is where, you know, a lot of practices are busy in the day to day and don't necessarily think about this, but it's it's a really straightforward way to, um, you know, to, to demonstrate your own outcomes um, and, and we'll see, see kind of why that is important in a moment. Um, so when would you record this? So with, within IDD therapy and the spinal uh, decompression programs. So we looked to, to take an ODI at the first appointment and then most definitely at the last appointment. Um, so we get a start point and an end point. You've then got the consideration of, well, what about in between, depending on how many treatments a patient is having. So some uh, clinics might record that midway through or you know at around the 10th at uh, the 10th session and then there are some clinics who record this on the fifth every every five sessions now some of those changes in those questions are really kind of subtle um so so it's not a sort of like a, a vast pain score where you can go from a 10 to a two or a 10 to a nine or an eight where it's you know tangible sometimes it's really subtle because you know as they might not have gone for a walk that day and so they don't really know how far they can walk or you know the sitting uh, may or may not have changed but another aspect may have so 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 it's not something you're going to take every treatment um but certainly at the first and the last as a as a kind of minimum and there's always this question of well why should you why should you bother with this well i think um you know for the for the patient so when a patient comes to see you then you know they're often mindful or nervous about what you're going to be doing and and how good you are and how serious you are and and, and as part of the overall mix of how you're handling your patient um if you're demonstrating them that you're prepared to track and measure their change it's a demonstration of your a uh, your you know your confidence in in what you're doing and that you really have their best interests at heart it's not a, a case of oh just come back next week and we'll see how we go sort of thing it's like we're looking for changes and and that, that will allow them to see that actually you're you know you're you're really involved in their um, process of care um you know when we're talking about um you know referrals then you know patient or uh, potential referrers want credibility they can have a body of um evidence but by demonstrating that your commitment to practice-based evidence you, you'll be able to then hopefully 
over time demonstrate the efficacy of your treatments. Again, the ODI is one component of your tracking and recording of um of outcomes, um, but um, but by having the ODI within that mix, then you're able to show demonstrably, that's a good word, um, you know, the, the changes that you have brought about uh, within the context of an overall case history. OK, so so referring, that's a that's a really important. And then also, you know, that kind of whiffing what's in it for me. What, why do this for your clinic? Well, um, you know, you, you you see your patients and perhaps you see the changes and you see the uh, the improvements. But by having some data points, you're able to get confidence of what you're doing. And maybe there, you'll also be able to see that Actually, there are some if a patient, certain patients may not be responding the way you would like. Are there any commonalities to those? Are there any areas where you can improve upon what you're doing? So um, that's something for your own professional standards to track your own uh, outcomes. And, and, and as I talk to, you know, if you, if you talk to surgeons, um, many will be, they, they're tracking the, the outcomes of their uh, patients, you know, um, after surgery at three months, uh, six months a year, um, and what have you, and, and, and they really kind of build up. And that's, that's as much to give them confidence about what they're doing, but it's also to see, okay, uh, nobody has a hundred percent success rate. Where are the ones which actually? What are the commonalities of the ones that perhaps don't do so well? Are there some things that we can work on to improve? So, um, some key takeaways. Um, so, use the Oswald Street Disability Index to track outcomes. It's a very straightforward measure. Don't be daunted by. It. You've seen the maths there. I can do it. Um, so, this is good for patient confidence, referral credibility, and you know it gives you greater confidence about your your own success rates you've got some data points that can give you be we can be very clear to patients about you know how they how that how they might likely fare with treatment um and it's super easy to implement and track and all of your staff um and team can 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 use it so um i'm going to be looking at some other um uh, you know, some 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 other measures, but that's just a little uh, intro to the Oswestry Disability Index. Thank you.